all right so it is 7 March 2020 we dropped this trailer off here uh, eight months ago at Camping World you can see that's that's where we're at now is Camping World and uh, eight months later they decide they can't fix the leak in the ceiling but in the meantime it has obviously still been leaking they tore out a piece here apparently to take a look at it and then eight months later they decide they can't fix it so uh, we're here picking it up and this is the start of our we'll fix it ourselves video you can see it most of it just kind of had this kind of stuff uh, where it was peeling back a little bit um, and then it did not have all this crap here when we dropped it off uh, and certainly this was not like this when we dropped it off either but it has sat here for eight months and gotten worse so thank you camping world all right so we're gonna start by taking this unit here off uh, so that we can get to this panel that's underneath of it start taking all this stuff down see what kind of damage we got underneath of that uh, this one here we're basically just going to take out the whole ceiling in here we got some material uh, we'll cut it into pieces and get it up back up in here I think um, this stuff here that's over the the bed area I think is is fine uh, it's obviously like this here it's peeling back but I think we may just cut that off like over there where it's peeling back uh, cut it off and paint it I think should be okay I got a, some areas back in over here where it's it's all peeled and bubbled too I assume from the moisture but not a whole lot of real water damage it's just from not being used and the leak that was over here created enough moisture that everything else kind of got damp and what could peel peeled all right so to take this this unit out I got a screw, a screw here, and I had a little cover here, and to pop out with my pocket knife, and up inside there, there was a screw, and then there's another screw right here, and then this, this whole thing here should come down. Alright, so that thing popped off with those three screws, and then I'm left with this. So, I'm going to have to take this off, there's a bolt here bolt there and a bolt over here I don't see oh here's here's the other bolt the bolt there so four bolts and then uh, I really don't know what that's gonna let loose on uh, I don't want to take all that off I just want to get this panel here this metal panel off so that I can uh, replace place this stuff so I'll start by taking uh, these four bolts off and we'll see what happens all right so we got these screws out these are these are long screws and they fit up I don't know if the camera is going to show it very well but they fit up in here and go through another level um, so that you can level all this off I guess once you get it installed now it hasn't dropped free yet I disconnected uh, these cables uh, here they went here and then here uh, this electrical cord comes in and I'm gonna need to I think take it off right here and there's another screw over here and here to detach that um, I took this little thermostat wire here off and for this wire here I think I'm just gonna have to take that screw out there and there's another one over here and then all that should drop loose 
and let me take this plate out after I remove these. There's a screw there, screw there, screw there. Looks like there's just three screws holding that on. There's actually four screws. This one here was rusty and I couldn't see it. Alright, so there it is. Um, looks like that wire there I did not just need to disconnect because it goes, it all stays right here. And I don't need to disconnect this. The only thing I need to disconnect is this yellow wire, my main power coming in, and this cable here. So we'll get that taken apart. I think I am going to take that off because instead of messing with all these wires, I think I'm going to take these screws out here and see if this whole unit will pop out. Got one more right here. I'm going to have to do that one by hand. All right, there we go. All right, so now that we got that off, um, we should be able to get a, a panel. We should be able to get a panel around that fairly easily, and uh, should be good to go. So now we got to see if I can get that speaker down and figure out how these little lights come out. All right, so this one here, the board here is rotted enough. I was just able to pull it out, and uh, let me zoom in here. You can see that. It's a little thing there, a little tab. It looks like these things just rotate and then the cover pops off. However, I can't get I can't get this one to rotate because it's it's got so much gunk in it, I think. Uh, so I'll have to get something, figure out some way to do that. But this one over here, I was able to turn and pop off. So, and then there's some screws in there. I'll have to take out and uh, I'm not sure how this works yet. Oh, it looks like it may do the same thing. It may, may rotate and it pop off. All right, so I was able to get this start turning. That looks like it just screws off. Yep, and then uh, you got some screws in there for the speaker. Alright, now that I can kind of see what's going on up here, you can see they've got a piece of probably what's half inch press board and then a, that's not quarter inch, but it's maybe eighth of an inch um, sheathing on there and then it's covered with some, it's covered with some vinyl stuff and I think what I may do because this looks like it's good back over here and to save myself some work I'm gonna peel off this vinyl stuff here and maybe take a circular saw and go from the corner of that across to that corner uh, because I'm guessing most of this stuff up here is good um, and I just need to pull down the bad stuff and so that might save me a little bit of work. I won't have to worry about taking out those lights and other stuff. I just got to worry about cutting them, cutting the wires when I take a circular saw to that. That might be a little tricky, but uh, we'll, 
we'll see what happens as we get going in here. But uh, that stuff there is all bad. Obviously this, this particle board's all rotted. So we'll have to keep tearing that out. And uh, then we'll just see what we got. And it looks like they, they attached the stuff with screws into the metal frame. So we'll just have to keep track of where those where the metal frame is and where those screw holes are uh, because we don't want to be screwing into the styrofoam obviously and then going through it into the, the aluminum top so uh, take a little bit of measuring but I think we can get it done all right so you can see this board here looks good this one here is obviously rotted away and uh, so I've got my got my cordless Porter Wagner circular saw set to a real shallow depth um, and I'm gonna cut some of this stuff and uh, pull away the just kind of rough cut at it uh, and try to discover where the bad stuff goes and where the good stuff starts and uh, cut across here because I, I know this is bad here but I don't know how far back it goes and if I don't have to replace some of these panels I don't want to um, so that panel back there might be fine so we're going to rough cut this stuff here and there, trying to avoid uh, the wires as best I can and uh, see what we end up with. All right, as you can see, my tactic worked pretty good. Cause I wasn't quite going through that. I scored it enough to be where I could rip it off of the ceiling pretty easily, but I didn't get those wires, which is what I was trying to avoid. So I didn't cut any wires, so I got my depth set good. Uh, now it's just a matter of pulling down anything that looks like it's not sturdy. <sighs> which is going to pretty much mean I think this whole panel here. Yeah. All right, making progress. So, I think I've kind of identified what I need to do here. Obviously, I need to get that cut back. Now, the insides of, of these cupboards, these, are, these look fine. There's nothing wrong with them. A little bit of mildew back there that I'll probably just clean off. Um, you can see where it got wet here. We'll, we'll clean that up and make sure it's okay. But I think I think for the most part, these cabinets are all okay on the inside. They still look brand new. Um, except for maybe that one corner over there. But at any rate, so I'm going to need to cut this board here out. And then probably take this board back a little bit further. Um, it looks like maybe to about there um, across. So I think going from, from that corner there, no, that's not gonna work. Um, at any rate, we gotta get that out of there. I think, since this board here is good, I'm gonna cut these, and I think I can get away with stopping here at this, at this seam. Now, this stuff here, I poked myself because this got all these little bitty nails, nails in it. See that, see that nail right there? And it's got these all up and down it. And uh, it's some sort of strapping. 
And so I'm going to have to figure out, it's like a rubber, some sort of heavy rubber strapping is what that is. So I have to cut this stuff. I can't just, I can't just pull it down. It is really sturdy stuff. So, and it's grooved. I think it's grooved for that, that uh, eighth inch uh, paneling they put up there fit in there and uh, and then this thing being so tight helped hold it in place but we're going with a different method so I'm going to get my reciprocating saw out here so I can cut in a little bit more surgically than uh, I can with the other saw but Again, I, my first thing was identify what I needed to get done. I think I kind of got that 90% knocked out. All right, so we have this piece here that goes against the, uh, the inside above the door. Um, and the wife already took this apart, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. So uh, it has these little screws here, um, these decorative finish washers on them. And this material matches other material that's inside the trailer. And it's not really that bad. Uh, it needs cleaned up a little bit, but it's got some wear over here, but uh, I think we're gonna reuse it. So, but on the flip side, you can see it's pretty rough. And uh, this part here is just, just decayed, fell right off. Um, but this part here is still kind of intact. And I just so happen to have some more of this material around, this eighth inch uh, veneer stuff. And this is big enough, so we're just gonna measure another piece like that. And then we'll be able to glue it to the back of this, put this back on and, uh, and reattach it. And it should be, should be good, to, good to go. All right, we got some glue, wood glue. That's a little chunky from Zenton, but that's okay. And raided the wife's pantry here uh, and got some weights to weight this down with gallon paint cans some bleach some vinegar whatever you got laying around a little bit of wash spray that should work actually I realized I had a couple batteries laying around to work even better. All right, so the glue is dried, and uh, when Lori's in here putting the cover back on, she took that cover and she put it in the sink and scrubbed it good with some soapy water. It did not disintegrate like we were expecting it would, but uh, held up pretty good, cleaned up okay, good enough to put back together, and we'll put it back up when we're done repairing the ceiling. Are you going to glue that down? Yep, yep. take this down and then it so. back up. Alrighty. Alright, so this ceiling has these little plastic strips that act as um, a uh, junction between the two, between the seams and the ceiling. But it's a, it's kind of a pain. I'm not sure I like it. And uh, like this over here, I tried to fit back up in there and it, it just doesn't go. So I think I'm gonna cut it out and then I'll just use actual wood, um, some little strips of wood to fit over those seams. I think it'll look just as good and be a lot easier to work with. The other thing I'm gonna do is I've got a, I've got a big level out here. I'm gonna use as a straight edge to mark some of this, like, like here where the, the wood is good. There's, I don't see any sense taking all that out. Taking all this right here out. 
Uh, I'm just going to cut a straight line and then we'll we'll cut that board there. Um, same thing with this stuff over here. I'm just going to figure how far back it goes that it's good and then cut across uh, so that way I've got a little less work to do. And then I've got plenty of these these steel frame pieces here that I can attach pieces of wood to. So uh, we're just going to mark this up and then I'm going to I'm going to cut this wood, the bad wood out with this little reciprocating uh, saw here. Um, that will I could use a circular saw, but I hate using a circular saw upside down and I'm not very good at using it upside down. And this thing here will let me um, be a lot more uh, meticulous in my cutting so that I can just mark a line and cut and I can watch out for for all these wires. Because with a circular saw, you know, you're usually cutting in a long line and uh, I, I want to avoid that. So I can cut just a little bit of time with that guy there. I think that will serve me better. Um, and then plus I can get right up to the edges of these areas over here. I might take a little bit of blue tape and, uh, and put across the top here just so that reciprocating saw doesn't damage uh, that surface. And then uh, the other thing I've got is I've got my grinder over here and these screws that came out uh, up from over here they were all rusty and a lot of them came off as just the heads of the screws, those are just the heads. So the uh, I've got these little I've got these little spiky parts of the screw that are still sticking out where they didn't screw out. So I'm going to take this grinder and grind those flat so that way uh, it's easier to attach the boards and I don't go racking my knuckles on them or something. that seems to be working pretty good uh, we got a fairly straight line going there uh, certainly enough to where I can see what I'm doing and oh, let's come back and trim that up a little bit interestingly enough this board here where I picked to draw the line is uh, is actually the edge of that board there's not another one next to it so I should make taking this down taking this piece down here pretty easy So, um, I need to take this board here back a little ways. Problem is, I got a little over aggressive when I was investigating this to begin with, and I, I tore this up. Otherwise, I could just cut it right here and I'd be fine. Um, the other problem I've got is I've got a new piece of stuff to go up here, but it's not going to match the old stuff. So, it's going to look a little different. And I've got a seam there that I think I'll just leave should be fine but over here I certainly can't have this Tetris shape uh, thing going on to replace this this eighth inch stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it all the way up to this corner here and then come across um, and probably just go back to there uh, that way I can replace that whole piece and it all be one color and uh, now obviously this stuff up underneath here I'm not going to do, but I'm going to tear down all this 1 8 stuff here so that that way it's, it's all going to match.
Alright, so I'm ready to replace these panels and I'm going to screw in uh, these panels to this this uh, steel frame here. So my panel, I'm going to measure over to the middle of the steel frame and that's how wide my panel is going to be. And then I have a light that goes here. So I measured my distance out, which was like six and a half inches to the center of that hole. And then over which was like two inches and then the same thing with the speaker over here I measured out that's 29 inches and then measure over seven inches and then we'll use the speaker and the lights as templates for our holes so ready to go cut that first board once I get that in we'll uh, put up the second board we'll take some tape put these up here so that they'll be out of the way when we put the panel in and we'll drop it through the hole uh, we should be cooking with gas. Alright, so I marked the spot where the center of my speaker goes. And I've got the speaker here. And this is going to go, um, or the hole for this, needs to be such that this, this flange right here with the holes in it fits up against the, uh, the bottom of this board. So I got my calipers out here and I measured this from this side to this side, how big a hole I would need. And I come up with, let me zero that again. I come up with about 136, we'll just call it 137 millimeters. So that's how big I need to make the, uh, the diameter that I need to make my hole right here. So that means we need to come off of this, divide this by half, which would be 65 plus uh, three and a half, 68 and a half, 68 and a quarter. So we go 68. Close enough. I should be from there to there and all right so I went and got me a scrap piece of wood and I cut a little notch in it that will fit around this nail so the next thing I want to do is I want to put a hole in here where my pencil can fit through at the right point and then all I got to do is go around like that and that will draw me the perfect circle so we're going to just measure this. All right, I'm going to drill me a little hole right there. All right, so I'm going to draw around there. I should intersect this line and the other line if this is right. And I might have been off just a little bit on this measurement here, but you can see I'm just outside that mark and just inside that mark. So my distance between the two sides is 136. 136 millimeters is just what I was looking for. So that's going to be good enough. I'll just cut out that circle and uh, we'll be in business. So quick little way to make any circle, uh, any diameter you need. And I'll probably just use the same scrap of wood uh, to cut my circles for this unless I got a hole saw that's the right size. And good news on this, my lights happen to be the right size for the hole saw so I don't even have to measure on the, on the hole for the lights. Perfect. Just a little bit of wiggle, but uh, you can see all my holes here are still in the wood. 
So that's just the way I wanted it. All right, for this one here, all I gotta do is use a hole saw. And my light will fit in there. I think I'm gonna have to notch that to where those notches can go up in there. And then they're designed to clip over the finishing paneling. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to give them some room to work to do their thing. Easy enough. All right, so I'm just gonna measure these and allow for some slop. And uh, we'll call that 12 millimeters. Really doesn't matter which side I put these on, as long as they're opposite each other. That's a good way to line these up over here. Yep, no, that's not a good way because those are offset. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna eyeball it. Or maybe not. That looks about right. I'll cut some slots. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I'll cut a slot in this and then uh, make sure that the light fits in it. It'll be good. That looks about the right depth. All right, let's see if that will accommodate it. And it does. So we're good to go on those. So this panel, almost ready to be installed. Need to get a pilot hole or two started so make it easier for me to put my uh, my metal screws through there into the metal that that steel frame all right so I ordered two different screws these are both metal screws uh, to see which one I would like better and uh, I and both of these are just short I could screw these all the way into the steel frame and it would not puncture the uh, the aluminum watertight skin so after I go through these, this, um, I, I, I've, I'm nowhere near puncturing that aluminum skin. But after looking at this, if I put this one on, this is like a pan head. And, uh, and my, my paneling that I'm going to put up wouldn't go against that very well. This one here, this one here is meant to be countersunk. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to drill my holes where uh, where I want them and then countersink that just a little bit so that this will fit up there and be flush um, and then I still got I don't know five or six threads there that go through the steel uh, frame so I think I'm going to go with these screws here and we'll pre-drill the holes on this side and I'll I think I'll put a starter hole into the steel frame these are supposed to be self tapping um, I don't know maybe I'll try one and see if it is but um, I, I may drill a pilot hole because it just makes life easier make sure that everything lines up good all right so I'm gonna drill pilot holes through my through my board here and what I've done is I've picked a drill bit that is the same diameter uh, of the threads of the screw because I don't need it to hold, I don't need the threads to hold in the wood, I need the threads to hold in the, uh, in the metal, the steel frame. And so I want it to go through the wood as easy as possible, and uh, pre-drilling these holes will allow it to do that. So these holes... If I wanted to, I could push that through there, maybe with the hammer or just wiggling it back and forth. Uh, but they're tight enough to where it will hold it, which is good. That way I can put it in there and then not worry about it falling out and having to dig it up from the floor. Um, and then for my pilot hole into the metal, I want to make sure I pick a drill bit that is smaller. Smaller than the threads of the screw I'm using. In this case, it's about the same diameter as the solid part of the screw, but uh, the threads are going to stick out and grip. So this would be a good size bit to use for the pilot holes into the steel frame. All right, so I started uh, my screws in a couple of these holes 
just in case uh, these self-tapping things work as good as they're supposed to uh, and I can just just go ahead and put them in if uh, if not uh, if they don't go in very easily I'll take them out and then pre hole pre drill a hole and then put them in again but uh, we'll see what happens Alright, so I am cutting the uh, the sheeting that goes over this, the paneling, final paneling, finished finish paneling, and I realize that I made these holes for the speakers and the lights exactly the right size, but I know I'm never going to get the hole in exactly the right place in the paneling. So I'm actually going to pull this paneling back down, make this hole a little bit bigger, that way I've got, you know, like a quarter of an inch bigger or something. That way I've got room uh, for my my finished paneling to line up and those things to go through there. Because otherwise, like I said, I just don't think they'll they'll always be off just a little bit. And it will it, it will make it to where I can't do this. So we're going to pull these down. we got a few of them we got to pull down to get the holes. We'll make those bigger. And then... Um, we'll cut holes in our paneling and uh, plus I can use these as templates for the holes in the paneling um, which should make it a little bit easier all right so I thought about this and I think if I so what I've done is I've taken these panels down I've put them over our paneling that we're going to put up so that I can measure out exactly where these holes go and then I can cut them and they'll line up perfectly so we're going to clamp these down, put all the panels on them, mark all the holes, and then uh, and then cut them and then put them back up. And I think that should work pretty good. I thought about making these holes bigger, but I think if I did that, um, I don't have a hole saw bigger than this, and to make it just a little bit bigger would, would be really hard to cut. Um, and so I, I, I think this will work. We're going to try it. If not, we can take it all down and do it over again. Alright, so we got our piece here cut out. We got all our we got our spot for our speakers cut and our lights cut. Uh, all carefully measured those out and uh, we're ready to install that. There's our second piece. We're ready to install that. And uh, we got our air compressor out here. 
got this uh, Metabo staple gun here. Uh, Metabo used to be Hitachi. I got one of their nail guns and pretty happy with it. Uh, at any rate, uh, we got some three quarter inch staples in there. And uh, this is the material we're nailing into. And this is the, uh, the cover piece. And so if I get those in there, that should go uh, about 40 or 60 percent through this this material here which I think is going to be fine so um, but before I before I start nailing this up I need to set the pressure on my staple gun there's a there's a wheel right here on my staple gun I can set the pressure how hard it drives these staples in so I make sure that that the top of the the staple is flush with my material and doesn't go into it too far or that it doesn't go in far enough so we're going to hook this up to the air gun and uh, do a couple test staples and see how it comes out and adjust this that way when we go to start actually putting it on the ceiling uh, we're not messing around with it uh, trying to figure it out at that point all right so that one went in way too far i'm going to have to adjust this that one's still going in too far too far. I think it's getting better. The end of my limit there. Maybe I'm turning it the wrong way. Alright, that's all the way the other way. That's definitely too far. Alright, that's farther than I'd like it, but I, I just can't adjust it back anymore. Alright, that's as far as that's in too far. So those are going deeper than I'd like them to, but uh, I'm out of adjustment here on this gun. Alright, so you can see these two right here. It's uh, not totally flush, but it's not too bad. That one there is better. I think I may be running out of air pressure. Alright, so there's an adjustment here to adjust the depth of the staples. You also adjust the depth using the pressure on your tank or your air compressor. So uh, I did a bunch of test staples here. Uh, I want this to kind of be flush like this one here is. And so uh, I've got it set at about 70, 75 PSI uh, for this staple and this material. So we're ready to start stapling. Okay. Speak the wires through. Here we go, light over here. And light over here. More lights. I got that one back there. Okay, so we're ready to get this lined up. So, we want... Okay, so see? See this yeah. edge? We want that edge up there. And we want this back. That door, that edge over here to your right, to your other right, is the problem. Okay. All right, now we gotta make sure that this is that door over there, that edge. Yeah, okay. Okay, see how that fits in over here? Yeah. And it has to be like this. Okay, can you hold it? Somewhere? I got somewhere. Okay. Okay, is it back? All the way? Yeah. Alright, I need to work across. Look, this is this is saggy stuff.
Yep. And over here. And over here. Let's get our speaker wires through at this time. Nope, that's not the speaker wire. There you go. Okay, hang on. What I want you to do is um Push that end up over there. This back. Okay, make sure it fits up against that seam. Are we good? There we are. All right, man. Okay, right there. Hold it. All right, so we got this up and uh, secured. Looks pretty decent, I think. Uh, my holes, some of them are pretty close. Some of them are not so close. Some of them didn't matter because there wasn't any wood up there to match up to. Uh, so the ones that are off a little bit, I'm gonna have to get the Dremel tool out here and uh, get that extra material off and then we'll be ready to put that stuff up in there, but my attempt was not quite successful. These wires are way longer than what we needed, but oh well. It is what it is at this point. So Lori painted this. This is the color of the old plastic right here. We didn't really want to paint over the top of our, our controls, but that's how old and yellow that plastic was. She took it down, she painted it, and now we got it put up. So it's looking good in here. All right, so for the purposes of this video, we're gonna call this done. Um, we, got, we got lights that, that work. And um, we got to come back up. We got we got some paint that we're going to touch up this this stuff here with. Uh, of course, we'll we'll pull all the blue tape off once we're done painting that. And then uh, we got this little piece over here to put back up. Uh, and then we're going to touch up the paint uh, around here and around those seams. We scraped off all that loose vinyl, uh, so we got to touch that up. But uh, you know, that's not hard to figure out. You don't need a YouTube video for that. Uh, so we're going to call this video done. Um, and again, um, everything's working. Looks fairly decent. It might be kind of hard to tell. I'll try to get a wide view here. We got speakers at work. So that's what it looks like, the, the new part. In fact, the new part, because the old part hasn't been painted yet, Looks better than the old part, which I guess is the way it should work out. 